Hello and welcome to my morning note. Let's take a look at the emerging markets today. Now, emerging markets continue to be very popular, but it's interesting that they seem to have, on the whole, largely underperformed for several years now. What is also quite interesting is that uh, the belief, the great interest in emerging markets is largely driven by the emerging market consumer story, the belief that uh, consumers are going to start to grow and that middle classes are going to start to grow in the emerging markets. And yet, if you actually look at the way most people in developed markets invest, in emerging markets, they're really not touching the consumer at all. With me now to discuss this is the uh, principal of Emerging Global Advisors, Martin Hoekstra. Martin, thank you very much for being with us here today. In Hello, John. Let's start by taking a look at how the, the main consumer sectors, discretionary and consumer staples, have performed compared to the emerging markets as a whole. This is all according to MSCI indices. What is, what's, the, what's the story here? Why, why is uh, the main indis, index, which is what drives most uh, foreign investment in EM, why is the main index underperforming the consumer sectors to that kind of an extent? Well, I think broadly speaking, consumers tend to be driving emerging market economic growth and mm. particularly domestic demand, so demand that's less dependent upon exports and cyclical businesses, right. is coming from the consumer sectors. But why, therefore, is that not showing up in the main indices, which yeah, is where the, people are actually putting their money. The index itself is really interesting. The, the conventional market cap weighted uh, benchmarks, of which the MSCI Emerging Market Index is the most famous, mm. and certainly the one that most people adhere to, is about 17% in either of the two consumer sectors. Uh, actually, if you take out the South Korean and Taiwanese companies right. who tend to get most of their revenues from other developed markets, yeah. the exposure to EM headquartered consumer companies is probably only about 12%. Consequently, if you isolate the consumer sectors, you have seen better performance. Okay, so largely speaking, people, the, the, un, the unhappy performance that people are getting out of emerging markets these last few years is from mining companies and banks and so on that tends to dominate the index rather than from those companies that attracted them there in the first place. It's really true. The, the, the index itself is a bit of a catalog of what's already happened in emerging markets. Mm. So as a frontier nation mm. starts to develop economically, typically it'll sell its natural resources and develop some sort of a banking infrastructure to right. support that. As a consequence, the emerging market index itself, which is obviously made up of countries that were once frontier, right. is over half financials, energy, and materials and the financial piece is almost all banks. Right, and those are the parts that are already mature. Now, let's take a look um, at volatility uh, across different emerging markets. Obviously, there's great interest in the concept of the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, thanks uh, concept much popularized by Goldman Sachs. But what seems to be interesting is that you can actually get uh, much less volatility, much more diversification by avoiding those biggest emerging markets, or is, is that the message we should be taking from this, uh, from this chart? Yeah, there's a bit of that. One could say broadly that the most mature countries, of which the BRICS uh, mm. obviously are included, and the most mature sectors, which are financial energy materials, are the drivers of volatility in emerging markets, and that the less mature countries and the less mature sectors tend right. to be less volatile. So the irony is that the reason that most people uh, allocate to emerging markets, which is based on some sort of future growth, domestic demand, economic development, right. tends to not be what they own when they own these large market cap weighted indices. Of course, beta, which is what this chart shows, is a bit of a proxy for volatility. Yeah. A beta of more than one implies uh, that the, the country or whatever the security being measured is, is more volatile than the market. And what you see is that a lot of these smaller countries, mm -hmm. counterintuitively, have not been as volatile as the market itself. Okay, Martin. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I think the lesson from all of this is quite clear. There's obviously there's very great interest and good reason for there to be great interest in emerging markets as a whole. People need now, as this whole sector starts to mature, to start asking themselves exactly which emerging markets. We're talking about many billions of people. Uh, we need to be much more differentiated in the way we approach emerging markets.